Joining us live is Ibrahim Ziki Rulahi, Executive Director of Christed. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. The Amajiri Saga and its attendant challenges have been an age-long issue. Please help us uh, understand the concept and how it has been abused. Well, uh, if we look at uh, the history of Amajiri, which uh, is more than uh, a century years old, uh, you discovered that it was intended to give uh, Islamic knowledge to young, young ones who will later become uh, Islamic uh, scholars. And this also uh, predates the, uh, the time of the Holy Prophet uh, Muhammad. So uh, when he migrated from uh, Mecca to Medina due to hostility, so those that believed in him, that wanted to learn from him, they were coming all over to Medina to uh, receive, uh, uh, receive uh, teachings of Islam. And then thereafter, some of them are deployed to other countries or other nations to go and uh, also teach the same uh, thing. So this was the origin of al Madari. I call it, it, it Muajirun, which is immigrant seeking for knowledge. Now, this, uh, this system has been sustained over time. And in fact, those that are embark on it, they are well respected within the community because they see them as people that have sacrificed their life and time to, to study uh, the faith and to also incorporate the tissue in others. What's However, yours? Okay. After, uh, after some time, people begin to renovate some things, invent their own uh, method, seeing it as a, a way of economic uh, survival. And therefore, what they do was not to begin to create their own kind of institutions of al where they bring children, make the parents to pay. Some said they are free, but what they do at the end of the day, they push the children to the streets. All right. Um, let's so, let's take a quick back. let's let's take your quick thoughts on the repatriation of these children back to their respective states. What are the likely implications? Well, I think it's part of the abuses the Almanjari children have been subjected to over time. So, for example, we know even when they were not repatriated, they uh, were seriously abused, dehumanized. In fact, they are not recognized as citizens of the country. People look down upon them. So, they are exploited. So the the amount Quranic masters push them to the street, give them target of the amount they must bring to home on a daily basis, and therefore you see them moving around the streets and end up sleeping in the streets. So then, uh, when this Almadiri repatriation came up, so it was uh, another another dimension to it. Because if you said that you want to end Alumajiri, the system of Alumajiri, and then you also want to make sure that they are good, they good, maybe they are integrated with their parents, there are better ways to do it. Not this time that we are face to face with uh, COVID-19 war, that you will now be using Alumajiri as Cape Goat, moving them around like animals. You can even see some of the vehicles in which they are using to, to move them. They pack them like uh, like animals. They have no respect whatsoever. They, uh, they, don't, uh, they don't believe they have dignity to be respected. They don't believe they have rights to be respected. So 
all they do is to play politics with the life of Alumaji. Okay, looking at solutions because now, we, we are really time constrained. Looking at solutions now, the administration of Good Luck Jonathan came up with the Amadiri uh, model schools to cater for proper, um, uh, properly rather, these children. Uh, what is the state of these schools, if you are aware? And perhaps whose responsibility is it to revive the training programs? Well, you see, it is part of the problem we'll be having over time. Yes, uh, uh, President Goodluck did not have new work. Uh, as far back as 2010, he decided to, to address the issue of al menace. And then 89 schools were built. But you also know that the way the government did their thing, the same people that hired down the life of these people, and uh, they were also saddled with the responsibility of finding solutions. So the contracts were routed through the state government, politicians, and all the rest. They made their money. Most of these buildings were done. They ne were ne some majority of them were never open for one day. And all they did now was to start playing politics with it, uh, uh, that uh, the, uh, there is no, it does not befit the Almagri, the terrorism issue. Of course, during campaign and all the rest, they use that gesture against, uh, against him. All so right. it is a vicious circle. When it, when it pays them, you, you need to, you need to out, sum up your thoughts uh, hello? quickly. Um, Sal, so so you need to sum up your thoughts quickly. We're out of time. Okay. When, when it pays them, they use this imagery to, to, get, to get, gain a fortune. For example, the Kano State Governor today will tell you that they have a 10 million Alumajiri. Then tomorrow they will tell you it is 5 million. So they don't have accurate figure. And so these are the Alumajiri they be using for the voting. These are Alumajiri they are, they are using to cause mayhem, religious crisis, and all the rest. So, but now that it is face to face with reality to take care of this Alumajiri, the time they need the government most. Is the time they are pushing them around in the name of uh, repatriation or whatever, and then started infecting them with uh, coronavirus disease. Executive Director, thank you very much for joining us. It's my pleasure. Thank you.